Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we discuss 12 expensive products that are worth their money. I've had all of these products for years, and because of that, I know they're worth it. In this list, I list things that are either downright expensive or things that are relatively expensive compared to other items you can get on the market. If you've watched our videos in the past, you know that I always encourage you to invest in quality items because quality items get better with age versus cheap items deteriorate over time. Also, I encourage you to look at the cost per wear of an item, not just the upfront cost, because most of the time, a quality item is less expensive in the long run. That being said, not every expensive item has to be new. Sometimes you can find quality items that used to be expensive, but you buy them used. That way you can enjoy the quality benefits without having to go all in on the money. So what are the 12 expensive items that are worth their money? In my opinion, the first one is a large leather weekender or duff bag. Most quality leather bags will likely run you around $1,000 or more simply because of the high-end leather. Ideally, you want it to be leather lined without having the extra weight. I've received lots of compliments from my leather weekender because it has a wonderful leather. It's a classic brown tone, which is nothing special. However, it is chrome tanned in Italy and has a nice pull-up effect. What that means is if I pull on the leather, it creates a different effect. Also, if I scratch it, I see a scratch mark, but then if I rub on it with my finger, it distributes some oils and the scratch mark is hardly ever visible. This kind of leather creates a wonderful patina over time that is lived in and unique to you and the experiences you had with your bag. I can use it when I travel over the weekend or just as a carry-on or simply as a bag that I bring to go to the gym. Because of the leather, this kind of bag will be unique. No one else will have one like you and it's simply much more stylish and elegant than a nylon bag or a canvas bag. It will also last longer and therefore the cost per wear is low. The second expensive item is a pair of quality socks. At $40, it's relatively expensive, and if you go with materials like silk or cashmere, you go up to $75 or $100, $120. Obviously, you can buy a pair of socks for a dollar or less. The problem is, especially if you want over-the-calf socks, is that they always slide down. On top of that, the material is cheap, the seams are thick, the socks are uncomfortable, and you have to wear them all day. It's probably not a surprise to you that I'm wearing $40 socks from Fort Belvedere because I designed them myself. I was sick and tired of socks that would slide down, so I came up with a design of high quality yarns with socks that stayed up with the right elastics. On top of that, I wanted two-tone colors because they make it much easier to combine the socks with your outfits and your shoes. To learn more about how to do that, please check out this guide here. At the same time, quality socks that are more expensive come in different sizes. For example, Fort Belvedere's offers four sizes, so you get exactly the right fit for your foot. Because we use very expensive, high quality, long staple cotton yarns, they will last longer and the cost per wear is as low or lower than a cheaper pair of socks. To check out the full selection of our socks, please check out the shop. And if you buy more, the price goes down. That way, your cost per wear is even lower. The third end that is worth its money is an overcoat. Yes, you can find overcoats for less than $200, but a quality overcoat from natural materials such as wool or cashmere will run you at least $1,000 or more. Not only does it keep you warm during the cold months of the year, but it's also very stylish. You can wear it on top of a suit, a jacket, or just your regular sweater. If you buy a classic overcoat, such as a duffel coat, an Ulster, or maybe a paletot, you'll get something you can wear for years to come. In my opinion, the best value is a 100% wool overcoat out of a heavy wool. If money is no object for you, go with a cashmere blend, which is softer, usually not as heavy, and it wears out more quickly. You can just invest in one overcoat, I suggest go with a navy or dark blue overcoat, a paletot, which is very simple with a peak lapel that is double-breasted because the extra layers keep you warm. If you're on a budget, overcoats are a great item to buy secondhand because they don't fit as snugly, because of the heavy fabric, they drape better, and they're just more forgiving than a suit would be. Basically, all the overcoats in my collection are vintage, and I was able to get quality pieces at a very low price. It ranges from a vintage Chester Berry paletot overcoat with a velvet collar to a British warm or just a Casentino style double-breasted, really heavy navy overcoat that I found at Bobby from Boston. The fourth expensive item that's worth its money is a nice pair of well-fitting gloves. Usually, price point-wise, you have to invest between $150. If you want to go with peccary leather, we're talking more about $300 plus dollars. 
First of all, your gloves should fit tightly and they should be made of a soft glove leather that stretches with the movements of your hands. You also want quirks between the fingers because it increases the range of movement and makes them more comfortable. To learn more about glove letters, please check out our glove letter guide here. You want them to be finely sewn either by hand or by machine and you want something that just gets better with age. For example, Lamb Napa is really soft and very nice, but it will wear out more quickly than Peccary leather, which is really made to last. For example, I've had this pair of Peccary gloves for over 10 years. I once forgot them outside in the winter, they got all wet, but I could wash them and dry them, and they've developed a patina over the years. They're too big and don't fit me really well, that's why I decided to create my own, but overall the leather is top notch, and that's how a Peccary glove will age over time. For a selection of quality gloves, please check out our shop here. And if you wanna see how one of our gloves is made and what goes into it, please check out this guide here. Fifth item that is worth its money is a pair of precious metal cufflinks. Price-wise, it can range all the way from $300 up to $25,000. So why should you invest in a pair of cufflinks? It's simply one of those few jewelry items for men apart from a ring that look very dapper, elegant, and classic. Most modern cufflinks these days are made in China. They're not made out of precious metal. They look cheap, gaudy, and they're quite loud. On the other hand, classic cufflinks, for example, knots or some with precious or semi-precious stones, as well as cloisonné enamel cufflinks, are made by true artisans and craftsmen that put all their knowledge into it. And because it's made of a precious metal, it will last you for a lifetime, and you can even hand it down to your children and grandchildren. If you invest in a piece like Cartier, Van Cleven, Arpels, or Tiffany, you also pay for the brand name and their experience. How much you should invest in a pair of cufflinks is of course entirely up to you, but just a comparison. On the one hand, you have a pair of Tiffany cufflinks in 18 karat gold. They're hollow, they're not solid, and they cost $2,700. On the other hand, we have a pair of Monkey Fist Knot Fort Belvedere cufflinks. The shape was hand carved and it's an actual rope knot and you can see how it's nice and twisted. They're also solid and therefore much heavier than the gold cufflinks from Tiffany's. I think both of them can be worn for a lifetime and because the plating is so thick, it won't rub off. The Fort Belvedere cufflinks only cost $325, so where it's worth it to spend more than $2,000 for a gold version from a brand name is again up to you. But what I'm trying to explain to you is that you can find quality items that will last and you don't always have to go with a top dollar amount to get that. The sixth item that I think you should invest in are pinky rings. They're just a wonderful addition to a classic gentleman's wardrobe, and it's not something a lot of other people will wear. The problem is it's very difficult to find classic shapes in nice materials such as sterling silver or gold on the market today. Either you have to go custom and spend several thousand dollars on the ring, or you go vintage, but that costs a lot of time, and you'll often find lots of crappy rings. Personally, all the rings in my collection right now are vintage. They range from sterling silver all the way to solid 18 karat gold and anything in between. Because it's so difficult to find new ones, we're currently working on them, so stay tuned. The seventh item worth investing in is a Mont Blanc Meisterstück fountain pen. Of course, there are lots of other great manufacturers of fountain pens, Italian ones such as Omas, maybe Parker, or you name it. However, the Mont Blanc Meisterstück pen has been around for a very long time it's a very classic status symbol for many, but it's also a very good item that will not wear out prematurely. It has a nice gold nip and it writes very beautifully. At one point in time, I owned over 100 Mont Blanc fountain pens because I was a collector and fountain pens is actually what got me into men's clothing. Today, I reduced my collection a lot and I only have three Mont Blanc fountain pens. One is a Meisterstück 149, which is their biggest flagship model and it has a 3B nib, which is quite wide, and I use it for signatures. Another one has just a B nib, and I use it to write or take notes. And then I have a vintage piece, which is very old. It was made out of celluloid. It had a solid brass telescope mechanism on the inside versus the modern Meisterstück fountain pens are made out of resin, and inside is like a plastic lever mechanism. That being said, the old fountain pen doesn't work so well anymore because the seal is not tight because they used to have cork inside. The new ones seal very well and they probably will last you for a lifetime. Interestingly, over the time, the price has steadily increased to now almost $1,000. When I started, they cost about half, but even then you could find them used on eBay. The problem is there are lots of fakes out there, especially for Mont Blanc, so I suggest you only buy from trusted sources. The eighth item worth its money is a pair of Goodyear welted shoes. Which style you want heavily depends on what kind of lifestyle you live. 
A good year welded pair of shoes is usually made from a higher quality leather than a glued pair of shoes. It also has a more classic last that will stand the test of time and it can be resold, which is less expensive than buying a new pair. Now, price-wise, you can spend either $200 or $3,000 on a pair of Goodyear shoes. Of course, the difference is the quality of the leather, the patina or the hand coloring, the finish, also the bottom and the details are gonna be much more intricate on higher-end shoes. More expensive shoes will probably have a hand-stitched Goodyear weld. They'll have a nice waist and a lot more time went into the construction of that shoe. Of course, if you spend $2,000 or more, you also can get a custom Goodyear welted shoe. And that's just a wonderful experience because it really is perfectly suited to your foot and your foot alone. Is it worth spending $3,000 over $200? I think it's a very personal choice, but if you have a foot that it works with most lasts of higher end companies, and they usually come in different widths and different shapes, and you find something that works for you, it's definitely a much better value to go that route. That being said, it will never be as comfortable as a bespoke shoe. To learn more about the differences in Gucci welted shoes, please check out this video here. The ninth expensive item worth investing in is a quality belt. I know, belts are probably not something you might deem expensive because you can find them for $10, but you can also find some for $3,000. In my experience, a quality belt costs upwards of about $150. The difference, of course, with quality belts is that they all have a high-end leather material on the inside as well as on the outside and also on the lining. Now, most belts today, including quality belts, are edge painted, which means the leather is cut on the edges and then burnished and painted to create a uniform look. The really high quality belts are thinned out at the edges, which means you need more leather, and then they're folded and sewn together. It's just a construction that lasts much longer than an edge painted construction, and it's a true hallmark of a quality leather belt. Another detail about the quality belt is its buckle. Most belt buckles in the market today are made of a material called Zamac. It's an alloy made out of zinc, aluminum, magnesium, and copper. The problem is it will age very poorly and it scratches very easily. So over time, you have to throw your belt away, even though the leather might not be worn out, but the buckle just looks crappy. A higher end buckle is a solid brass buckle. Over time, brass develops a patina, and because of that, it's often gold plated or platinum or palladium plated for more formal dress belts that you would wear with a suit. Now, the plating thickness of the buckle can have a huge impact, not only on the longevity of the buckle, but also on the price. In my opinion, a solid brass buckle with a nice thick coating of either gold or palladium is probably your best value for the money. If money is of no concern to you, you may want to look into solid 925 sterling silver buckles or solid 14 or 18 karat gold buckles. Now that's a whole other level and the buckle itself will be worth more than the entire belt itself. Is it worth it getting, for example, a sterling silver buckle versus a solid brass and pay three or $400 more? It depends. It's a true luxury item and silver just develops a patina that you won't see on a plated brass buckle. The 10th expensive item I would invest in is a professional camera. I know most people today use cell phones and they think they're pro cameras, but they're actually not. A pro level camera has a large sensor. It allows you to get a wonderful depth of field, which means the amount is in sharpness versus the out of focus areas. It just creates a very beautiful look and in combination with the increased sharpness and the color rendition, it's just a very different experience. Personally, I use DSLR cameras, such as the Nikon D850 or Nikon D500. It has the advantage that it comes with interchangeable lenses, but overall, you need to invest between about five to $10,000 to get a nice DSLR with a range of lenses that allow you to basically photograph everything you want. In my opinion, it's totally worth it because we have a business where we use it, but even for just personal use, I would recommend to invest in a more upscale camera. Of course, if you're rich and you want the very best in quality, you have to go with a medium format digital camera, such as a Hasselblad. However, bear in mind that these pictures oftentimes have 100 megapixels, so you need a whole ecosystem of computers, cards, and everything that work together so you can develop a workflow and actually get those pictures. It's more something for a pro photographer, not something for an amateur. The 11th item is a wallet. A wallet is something you wear every day, you pull it out when you maybe pay for a business meal, and overall, it develops a nice patina if it's made of quality leather. 
A cheap wallet, on the other hand, just falls apart and it looks older. In my opinion, a wallet should always be an attractive item that you like wearing, that has a nice touch, a nice feel, and it's something that lasts. Let's say you invest $285 in a Ford Belvedere wallet, which is made out of the highest quality leather there is in Germany. If you break it down to a cost per wear, you probably end up of five to 15 cents a day, depending on how you treat it and how long it will last you. The 12th expensive item that I think is worth investing money in is your smartphone. Personally, I use my smartphone every day. I do lots of business dealings with it. And because of that, I always buy the top model when it comes out and then I'll use it for two years. At that point, I can sell it for 200 bucks or pass it on to a relative. For example, just the other day, I bought the new Pixel 2 XL phone. With taxes and everything included, it cost me over a thousand bucks. However, if I can use it for two years and I break it down, it costs me only about $1.40 per day. Personally, I'd love to buy a modular phone so I could exactly what I want without creating too much waste. Because as you know, with the technological advances in the smartphone market, we have new things coming out every month almost. And because of that, we have a lot of old phones that are just discarded, which is a huge waste and a big ecological problem. Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be a more eco-friendly option out there, so you have to stick with what it is. Why do I go with a Google phone rather than an iPhone? I'm just not part of the Apple ecosystem. We use a lot of Google products and it simply works for us. Also, I like the fact that it doesn't come with any kind of bloatware, such as on Samsung, LGs, or Huawei. And if security or other updates are necessary, Google phones usually receive them first. What are expensive items that you think are worth the money? Please share in the comments below. Today, I'm wearing a classic fall outfit, which consists of a three button single breasted tweed coat in a nice chocolate color. I found that one vintage. I'm pairing it with a burgundy vest and a red striped shirt. The tie is a silk knit tie from Fort Belvedere. And you can find it in our shop here. The same is true for my silk wool pocket square and my cufflinks. I chose gold monkey fist knot cufflinks because they're classic and they work well with my knit tie as well as the buttons on my waistcoat. Because I have a louder vest and a noticeable pocket square, I went with just plain navy corduroy pants, which are typical for fall winter outfits. I combined them with brown Jodhpur boots. And if you wanna learn more about boots, please check out the guide on our website here. The socks I'm wearing are likewise for Belvedere. They're the blue and red ones, but you can hardly see them when you have boots. However, I like them because they go over the calf, they stay up, and keep me warm and dressy all day. To add a little something special to my outfit, I went with a pinky ring, which is a nice green tourmaline. And I also added a boutonniere flower, which is an Edelweiss from Fort Belvedere, and you can find it here. For the pocket square colors, I chose something that was contrasting in that kind of mohair blue tone, but it would pick up the colors of the vest, as well as a tie and the ring.